Hello, everybody. My name is Julian, and I want to welcome you to my channel. For the last number of years, I've worked as a coach development learning facilitator in the province of Ontario, helping train new and existing sailing coaches to up their certifications and become more effective instructors. This video is a screen capture of a webinar that I gave in the spring of 2020 as part of our online delivery of instructor development materials. Most of the information presented in this video has already been seen in other videos on my channel, but I thought that there might still be some interest in this updated video. If you have any questions about the content, please feel free to put them in the comments below. This presentation is about wind velocity vectors, okay? But our objective with this presentation is to convey to you how you can use vectors as a tool to solve and understand velocity-based wind shifts, okay? So we'll start by defining vectors. A vector is a convenient way to store and represent sets of information. Graphically, we can draw vector arrows. With an arrow, we can represent magnitude and direction, okay? So that's two pieces of information, magnitude and direction, and we're going to store them inside of a vector. So the magnitude is represented by the length of the arrow, and the direction is represented by where the arrow is pointing towards. Let's talk about the anatomy of a vector. So there's two important parts that you need to know about. The tail on the left in this diagram is the end of the vector that the arrow points away from. The tip on the right side of this diagram is the end of the vector that the arrow points towards. It's also sometimes known as the head of the vector or the head of the arrow. We can combine two or more vectors by adding them. We add vectors tip to tail. Can I have everybody say that with me? Tip, tip to tail. So we add vectors tip to tail. So in this case, if we wanted to add vector A to vector B, we would get vector C. We just added red plus blue equals purple. And we draw it by first laying out the red A vector. Then we lay out the B vector where it starts at the tip tail intersection there. I, I can't point with, like it's, this is a serious drawback with Pear Deck is that I don't have a pointer, but hopefully you're following along with my words. So the red arrow meets the blue arrow at the tip of the red arrow and at the tail of the blue arrow, tip to tail. And then the purple arrow, which is C, the result of adding those two together, is going from the starting place of the first vector to the ending place of the second vector, which is to say that it's actually from the tail of A to the tip of B. Saley is asking why this is important. So in the case of wind velocity vectors, what we can see is that the magnitude of the velocity vector comes from the wind speed. And we measure that in kilometers per hour or in knots. Okay, if it's on land, usually kilometers. If it's on water, usually knots. The direction of the velocity vector arrow comes from the direction that the wind is blowing. Okay, so uh, I pulled this up. I think it's a screenshot of sail flow centered at the Royal Hamilton Yacht Club. And um, what we can see is that we have an east-northeast wind, and it's blowing at 16 knots. And a fun, annoying fact about wind direction is that we refer to wind direction in terms of where it's coming from. Okay? So it's an east-northeast wind because it's coming from the east-northeast. And what that means is that our vector arrow is going to point towards the west-southwest. Are there any questions about that? That's not super important, but that's a fun, annoying fact. So the wind velocity vectors, in a sailing context, there are three that we need to be aware of. Can you guys name the three in the pair deck? And then we'll see how much you already know. And while you're waiting for your classmates to respond, you can think about what's going on in the picture to the right. Okay, so most of you actually have this right, but some of you I can see do not. And some of you actually will admit it because you've put question marks there, so this will be uh, instructive for some of you. So the first of the three that we want to talk about is the true wind. Okay, 
that's the name of the first of the three that we want to be aware of. The true wind is the wind velocity that's felt by a stationary objects. It's the wind that you would feel on shore. It's the wind that's reported by weather marks, weather buoys. And it's also the wind that you would feel on an anchored boat. Can anybody think in a sailing context, wh what boats are, are anchored if we're like out there racing? The race committee. The race committee is anchored. And also the race committee controls how and where the race marks are placed, right? So if the race committee is doing their job properly, typically the race course will be square to the true wind. Okay. Conventionally, the true wind is drawn from the top of the page facing down, unless we're plotting it on a chart, and then we actually have to take the compass direction into account. But for now, and for most of the things that you guys are going to do as sailing instructors, top down is the true wind velocity. Okay. The next one that we need to be aware of is the boat wind. So the boat wind is the wind velocity generated by the motion of an object. Okay, this is like when you stick your hand out the car window, or when the bug hits you in the face while you're riding a bike, or when you're zooming around in a motorboat and your hat flies off, or when you're moving forwards in a sailboat. And that's probably the one that's the most important for this lesson, but all of the other ones are also real examples of the boat wind. Okay, so uh, by convention, the boat wind is drawn pointing towards the bow of the boat along the center line. Okay. The last one that we want to think about and be aware of is the apparent wind. The apparent wind is the wind velocity that results from combining or adding the true wind and the boat wind. Okay. This is the wind that the boat actually sails by. The wind indicators or the telltales show this direction. We trim our sails to this wind direction and this wind direction is often not the same direction or speed as the true wind. Are there any questions about that before we move on to the next slide? Okay, so what I would like you all to do is draw for me the apparent wind by combining or adding the true wind and the boat wind in this diagram. So we got quite a few responses here. Uh, I'll throw them up on the slide. So that one is absolutely correct. So is that one, so is that one, so is that one. So I'm not seeing any arrows, uh, sorry, any errors here. Um, the only thing that you could probably do to screw this up, oh, there, that one. Okay, so what's wrong with this picture? Hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing. The arrow's pointing in the wrong direction. Right, so how could we fix that? I mean, obviously we could fix it by turning it around, but I mean, how can we make sure that we don't make that mistake? I'll withdraw from from like the end to the to the front right so we draw from the starting point of the first vector to the ending point of the second vector which means that we actually start at the tail of the first vector and move it towards the tip of the second vector okay um i hope that makes sense i'm realizing now that the tip to tail thing gets a little bit confusing in that situation but just be aware that tip to tail is telling you how you move those two vectors that you already have around the page to put them in contact with each other. And then, then you have to kind of forget about that and think about starting at the starting point and ending at the ending point. Okay, so uh, somebody made that mistake. I'm sure someone else did too, but we won't wait too long to try to find it. So uh, here is my answer that I believe is the correct answer in this situation. And Saley says, that tip to tail thing did turn out to be important, although it was a little bit confusing. So now I would like you to draw the full diagram of true wind, boat wind, and apparent wind for the three boats that you see on the page. Okay, so I've given you some time there and I'm seeing that um, many of you have answered. We're not going to go to the pains of debriefing everybody's answer there, but it's I think it's valid for you to try first before I show you the answer. So we'll start with the boat on the right, okay? Or sorry, <laughs> we'll start with the boat on the left, okay? The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw the true wind, which is coming down the page from top to bottom by convention. And we'll label that TW, okay? The next arrow that we're going to want to draw is the boat wind, 
which will be an orange arrow in this case. It doesn't have to be orange when you do this in, you know, life. But for the purposes of my presentation, I think it's helpful to keep things the same color. So the next one is the boat wind. And I'm drawing it along the center line of the boat towards the boat. The last one that I'm going to draw is the apparent wind, which I'm using green for. And I'm going to connect it from the starting point of the true wind to the ending point of the boat wind, which is like that. Okay? And so what we can see is that although this boat is on a beam reach with respect to the true wind, if we look at the apparent wind, which is the wind direction that we need to trim our sails by, we would see that based on the vectors that I drew here, which might not represent a real situation, but based on the vectors that I drew here, we would have to sheet in our sails a little bit so that the boat is actually sailing properly with respect to the wind. Does that make sense to you guys? Wouldn't the magnitude of the true wind like, be way bigger, though? Um, it would, actually, the magnitude of the boat wind would probably be way smaller. Actually, any of these arrows could be any size, right? They just reflect different physical situations. But in a typical situation, the boat will not be sailing as fast as the wind. So you, you're right. The true wind would be bigger than the boat. Okay. But that's actually not the point of this exercise. And there was no information given about how fast anything was moving, right? But we'll get there. Don't worry. So next, let's talk about the one that's, that's sailing on a run. Okay. It's a little bit kind of confusing and difficult to draw. So the first thing we'll do is we'll draw the true wind from the top to bottom of the page. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we'll draw the boat wind, okay? Sailboats don't typically move very fast on a run, so I'll try to keep, um, I think that was Colin. Try to keep Colin happy like that, okay? There's my boat wind. It's a little bit smaller than the true wind, okay? And you could draw these overlapping each other if you wanted. That would totally be fine. But in the... Uh, in the case of a boat on a run, if you want to draw them beside each other so that you can see all of the arrows, that's fine as well. Okay, that's up to you. Okay. Uh, either or. Okay. The last one that we're going to draw is the apparent wind. And something that's kind of interesting here is that in this case, the apparent wind is still pointing in the exact same direction as the true wind, but it has a much smaller magnitude. Okay, last one is the situation that we already saw. In this case, we're going to start with the true wind again, top down. We'll move on to the boat wind, which has to point towards the bow of the boat. And lastly, the apparent wind. Uh, are there any questions about that? Some of you got that done while I was talking about it, and like some of you probably already had it, but uh, I saw some hesitation there. So that's what we would mark as the correct answer for any of these diagrams if you're interested. Okay? Next, let's talk about velocity shifts. So we're used to thinking of wind shifts as changes in the true wind direction. So if I'm watching a flag and the flag is flicking back and forth from like wind coming from the north or wind coming from the west, that would be changes in true wind direction. If I'm sailing around a point and I'm having what would be more of like a geographic based wind shift and the wind is bending around that point, that would be a change in the true wind direction. Okay? But changes in the magnitude or the speed of the true wind and changes in the magnitude or the speed of the boat wind can also cause changes in the direction and magnitude of the apparent wind. And we're gonna walk you through how that works next. So increases or decreases in the true wind are represented as what we would call gusts or shoreline funneling or lulls or wind shadows. Hopefully that makes sense. Those are some ways that the true wind can increase or decrease. So what effect would an increase in true wind have on the apparent wind? We can see in this animation what effect it would have. Okay, so in this animation, the true wind is growing, increasing in magnitude, and we see that the apparent wind is also increasing in magnitude, and it's rotating. The correct answer is that the apparent wind is going to increase and shift aft. 
Okay. This is um, this is where that fun annoying fact that I pointed out earlier comes in. So remember, I pointed out that we refer to wind direction as where the wind is coming from. So hopefully you can see that with respect to the boat, the point where the apparent wind is coming from is moving aft on the boat, which is this way, right? This is the same as this is the same as this. So it's moving aft, which is a lift, okay? What effect would a decrease in true wind have on the apparent wind? So I would just ask that for the two of you who answered increase and shift forward, just watch the green arrow and tell me whether it's growing or shrinking as the blue arrow shrinks. Blue arrow shrinks and the green arrow also shrinks. So it's decreasing and it's shifting forward, which is a knock. And this is just gonna be the answer here. Parent wind decreases and shifts forward, which is a knock. Okay. So now here we have a boat that's sailing downwind. And the question is, what effect would an increase in the true wind have on the apparent wind? Most of you are saying that it increases and shifts aft, but some of you are giving other answers. So what I would like you to do, all of you who have given other answers, please watch this animation very carefully and let me know if you don't agree. So what we see is that when we're sailing downwind, as the true wind increases, we get lifted and we get a shift aft. Um, now we're sailing downwind and we have the true wind decreasing and hopefully all of you will appreciate that it just has the opposite effect. So if the true wind decreases, that should make the apparent wind decrease and it should shift forwards, which is a knock. And this is just the animation which shows what I just said. Okay? So what we have here is a summary of what we just experienced with those animations. What you can appreciate from this is that when we're talking about changes in the true wind velocity, we have the same effect when we're going upwind and downwind. If the true wind increases because we have a gust, the apparent wind increases. If the true wind increases, the apparent wind shifts aft. If the true wind decreases, the apparent wind shifts forwards. And that's true both for upwind and downwind, as I just showed you with those animations. So now let's talk about increases and decreases in boat wind. Okay, so increases and decreases in boat wind could result from anything that affects the boat speed. Okay, here are some examples. The boat wind might increase if we accelerate our boat at go. It might increase if we hoist the spinnaker, if we initiate a plane or a surf. The boat wind might also just increase because we started sailing better, because we flattened our boat or because we cheated in our sails, okay? Boat wind might decrease because we douse the spinnaker, because we crash into a wave, because we sail through some seaweed. All of those would be things that affect our, or, or maybe because we drop the main sheet. Okay, those are all things that could decrease our boat speed, which would decrease our boat wind speed. So, the question is, how would this vector diagram change if the boat wind increased? And we're asking you to draw it. So if you've already answered, I'll invite you to come back over to the GoToMeeting slides and you can review some of your uh, colleagues' answers with me. So this person is absolutely correct. The boat wind would increase in length and then the apparent wind would shift forwards. Same thing there, that's correct. That one's also correct, but I think that you're like, you're missing the point with my guidelines. So um, to compare this really easily, it's useful to keep the, the tips of the arrows anchored to the bow of the boat. So like in this diagram, the tips of the arrows are anchored to the bow of the boat, and it's really easy for us to see the wind shift, um, like the direction that the apparent wind has shifted. But if we draw it this way, this way here, uh, even though the arrows are like technically correct, 
it's a lot harder for us to visualize the direction that the apparent wind has shifted. No problems, no problems. Uh, you know, in real life, you're probably going to be drawing this with a pen on paper, so, you know, black and white is fine. Not sure where the brown arrow came from in that diagram. Um, okay, that's, that's enough of that. So thank you, everybody, for participating with me and drawing those diagrams. This animation here shows what you just drew, uh, only it's showing it animated. Okay, so as the boat wind increases, as the boat wind increases, the apparent wind also increases and it shifts forward. And as the boat wind decreases, the apparent wind decreases and shifts aft. I'll let you watch that for a couple more cycles. And once we've seen it a couple more times, uh, if there are any questions, feel free to ask, but I'm going to move on. So let's talk about the boat wind's effect on the apparent wind magnitude. Okay? So if the boat wind and the true wind add together when we're going upwind, they make the apparent wind larger than the true wind. When we're going downwind, when we add the boat wind and true wind together, they partially cancel each other out, and they make the apparent wind smaller than the true wind. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So given that that's the case, I'd like you to take a leap of faith with me and observe this table. Okay? So when we're going upwind, if the boat speeds up, the apparent wind increases and shifts forwards. If the boat slows down, the apparent wind decreases and it shifts aft. This flips around if we're going downwind. If we're going downwind, when the boat speeds up, the apparent wind decreases. And when the boat slows down, the apparent wind increases. So there's our first um, kind of brain twister. Okay? Um, and then the, the directions the direction shifts are still the same. So um, that concludes my brief presentation to you on uh, wind velocity vectors. Now, I just want to point out that some of these answers seem obvious to you right now because I have provided you with an animation that shows them, right? Do you guys think if instead of providing you with this, if I provided you with just a picture of a boat and some words, do you think that you could answer these questions? Okay, here's a question. If you're sailing upwind and your boat sails into a gust, what effect will that have on your apparent wind and how should you react? It'll shift it aft and you should head up. Okay, so that's, that's the answer. I mean, like, how could you reason out the answer if you didn't already have it in your head? Draw it. Right. So walk me through that, and I'll draw it as you walk me through. Um, me? We're, 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 anyone, yeah. We're sailing upwind. You're talking, so yeah. yes, please. Okay, you're sailing upwind, yeah. um, and you're, um, so gust comes, which means it's a bigger, uh, okay, so, so, you up, like, so, so the first thing we'll do, we're sailing upwind, so we'll, let's establish what our first set of vectors look like, right? Okay, yeah. So there's our first set. Okay? Okay. So now, and then you'll okay, and then the gust comes. Um, so your true wind gets bigger. Okay. So we can reason through that by drawing drawing the gust, right? Yeah. And then you just connect the end to the top of the arrow again, and you see that it shifted aft and um, increased. Okay, and it shifted aft, and it got longer, so we're going to call that an increase. Okay, thank you for working through that with me and talking it through with me. So for those of you who are left scratching your head when you get, like, weird wordy questions about how your sail trim might be affected by a gust, think about these diagrams and make one for yourself that explains the situation. And then the answer will kind of reveal itself to you. Okay? Um, so if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them.